Hey guys, it's Matt from Eastwood. We're here in the Eastwood garage doing another live tech session for you guys on Facebook, YouTube, and also Eastwood.com. If you guys haven't watched one of these before, we want it to be as interactive as possible. Uh, we have sitting over here Randy that does a lot of the videos as well, Manny in the chat. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going, Matt? So uh, Randy, Randy will be answering any questions you guys might have uh, about our, today's topic. Uh, and he'll also be throwing some over to me live on camera. So if you guys have questions, uh, log in, join the chat, and uh, we want to hear what you guys have to say. So today I'm covering one. We do this periodically. Uh, we're going to do TIG welding uh, aluminum basics today. So I'm going to show you guys how to start welding aluminum and some of the things that I've come across that are oftentimes stumbling points uh, for beginners. And uh, we want you guys to kind of get up and running as quick as possible so you guys can lay in uh, really nice welds on the aluminum. So today I'm using our TIG 200 uh, analog machine. Uh, this machine is basically has everything you need in it to do uh, pretty much any type of uh, TIG welding of any material. Uh, and today we're going to focus on the aluminum welding. So to set up the machine, I'll have Joe dive in real deep and we're going to quickly just go over some settings and then we're going to do a lot of underhood shots today. Uh, just showing you the different settings on here. Um, so on the machine, uh, we're going to be using the foot pedal, so this power uh, switch for the amperage uh, is not going to be used today because that where I'm going to actually be changing it on the foot switch on this machine. Um, the preflow on this is how much gas comes out ahead of time. I have my preflow cranked up a little higher than I would for steel. I'll turn this so you guys can see. There we go. Um, so I have my preflow set up a little higher. I have it at 0.4 seconds. Uh, if I was doing steel, I'd probably have it down at more of like 0.2 seconds. That's so we have some additional gas coming out that's flowing over top of our weld before we actually initiate an arc uh, to give us just an extra little bit of cleaning, uh, clean area to work. We have the post flow here. I also have that turned up to about four seconds. Uh, again, with aluminum, it's more susceptible to uh, cracking or to having contaminants get into the weld after you are done welding. So I like to have a little bit of post flow, uh, have it a little longer than I would for steel uh, on that. So I have that set at four seconds. The last one here, which is the, the knob that's pretty important when you're doing aluminum, uh, on this machine we have, a, it's called the clearance effect, uh, or it could be the AC balance control on some machines it's called. So what this is doing is you're changing how long uh, it's going from uh, electrode positive to negative. You can actually change uh, how long it's hanging on those, basically. So the, the quickest way to remember this, uh, if you guys are just starting out, the more negative we're going to go here, the tighter of an arc we're going to get. It's going to have more penetration, but it's going to have less cleaning effect. So I'm going to show you guys that under the hood, change the settings a little bit so you can see. If we go more towards the positive side, it's going to give us a bigger cleaning area. It's going to be a shallower, more shallow of a weld as far as the penetration goes, but it's going to give us a much greater cleaning area. So depending on what you're welding, how clean it is, how old of, uh, the metal is, you may have to change the setting. You really shouldn't ever, on this particular machine, you shouldn't really ever go more than negative one, uh, negative half. And even that, uh, I usually keep mine hovering around negative uh, two to negative three and a half. So because we're welding with some pretty, pretty clean metal today, uh, it's just you know brand new aluminum. We don't really have to go too far to the positive side and keep my cleaning area nice and tight, which will keep my puddle nice and tight too. So I got it on foot pedal. I have the AC side turned on, and of course I have it switched on to the TIG because that's what we're doing today. Um, and for get welding gas, we have 100% uh, argon. So I have that turned on. I have the machine pretty much already set up with my clearance effect, like I said, at negative three and a half and all my pre and post flows. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to show you cleaning the metal and then we'll just do some under hood shots and change some of the settings so you guys can really see the difference that just making a couple of, the, a couple of these settings can make on your, on your weld piece. So. I have just a scrap piece here that looks, you know, it's fairly clean, uh, generally speaking. It's a pretty clean piece of aluminum. It's not all greasy or anything like that. But it, 
the aluminum, even something like this, uh, uh, on the surface layer, it has some oxidation that's actually going to, that needs to be removed before we start welding on this. Uh, because this is pretty clean uh, overall, I can use just a Scotch-Brite or a, a scuff pad, depending on what you have. Um, this is our green, more aggressive one that we, that we offer, our scuff pads. I like to use that, and then you can use the low VOC pre. Uh, pre. So the key is using the low VOC. That's because the, uh, the low VOC pre does not have any type of chemical in it that's going to cause issues when, if there's a residual um, pre left on the panel, it's not going to burn off and cause uh, like a toxic, toxic gas to come off. So if you use a brake clean, our standard pre is the same way as far as welding goes. You don't want to use it. Brake clean, chassis clean, any of the heavier cleaners, uh, you don't want to use those if you're welding because they can uh, burn off and cause a gas that's uh, not good for you. So I like to use the low VOC pre here and I'm going to throw some gloves on so I don't have any rubber ones here. And I'm just going to scuff this area up and I'll show you what the difference just in doing this does to our workpiece. You can also use a wire brush, a stainless wire brush, which we offer. Um, you can use a stainless wire brush as well. Uh, just make sure you dedicate your wire brushes to steel and stainless. Uh, you don't want to intermix them, if at all possible. So here's a little area I cleaned. You can see the difference is actually not nearly as shiny. It has more of a, of a matte finish now that we scuffed that, but that's a good surface that's prepped. Uh, you let the, you let the, uh, the pre flash off, which it, the low VOC pre actually flashes off really quickly. And from here you could, um, you could start welding. If this sits for any period of time, you do need to uh, go back and do that, that process again. So I'll move this so Joe's got a little more room. Um, the torch here, for you guys to see, we have uh, our gas lens kit set up on the torch. And the gas lens kit here, what this does is going to give us uh, better weld, uh, or uh, give us better gas coverage for our weld. So for aluminum, that's pretty much a must. And I got a 1 16th tungsten in here today, just doing some tight little welds. and. Uh, We'll check in and see if we got any questions um, that we have before we start welding. And Joe's going to eventually jump around here. Do we have anything um, that popped up? Yeah, we just have a uh, couple of people asked um, if you could go over the thickness of the metal and just what your settings are before okay, you start we, to weld. Yeah, we'll go over our settings real quick again before I and weld. There, and there is a chart on top to help, right? Yeah, yeah. Our, our, our machine does, uh, Randy makes good mention here, there's a chart. I don't know if Joe can probably get up from above here. We have a chart that kind of gives you a starting point for how to set your machine up. If you guys are just starting out, you can, uh, you can, you can check that and set the machine up. I've been doing this for a little while. I kind of know just by, you know, about where to set everything. Um, and this is just a starting point on this machine. So you can adjust it and change it from there depending on the type of metal you're welding or your preferences. You may want something to be um, a little different. So quickly my settings, uh, the amperage on the pedal here, I think I have one, 110 is my, so here's, a, here's the pedal. I have the max amperage set at about 110. So when I click on the, uh, when I push on this pedal at wide open throttle, you're going to have 110 amps. We can bleed that off all the way down to probably uh, like 10 amps or so it comes in at all the way up to 110. So that's where I have that set at. The clearance effect or AC balance control, again I have that set at about three and a half, four, negative three and a half or four. So that's going to give me a real tight, um, small cleaning area but a real tight uh, puddle. And then down at the post flow we got four seconds and the pre flow we have 0.4 seconds. 
for the pre-flow. So I'm going to talk you guys through it as I'm welding. I'll tell you the different things that are happening so you can, you can kind of see it, uh, hear it as I'm seeing. As you're watching, you can see what I'm doing. So Joe's got a fancy lens. He uh, puts on the camera here so you guys can actually see what's going on. Um, and I'll get set up here. Oh, and the metal is, uh, that we have here is about, I think it's about quarter inch um, aluminum that we have here. Actually, no, it's a little thinner. Yeah, if you're, if you're good, I'm good. I'm gonna, we're going to do some welding. Again, guys, feel free to throw questions out. If you have any questions as we're doing this, or if I skip over something, you, uh, feel free to drop us a, a, a question in, in the comments, and we will uh, we'll answer them for you. All right, so first thing here is we're going to... You're going to start your arc, and there's a little pre-flow there ahead of time. And I only got the pedal on about a quarter or half way. You can see it's just dancing around. And what it's doing, I'm going to move it around so you guys can see. You can see how it's cleaning. That's what it's doing. It's dancing around and it's cleaning off of the off the metal. Now you don't need to do this as much when you're generally welding, but I just wanted to show you guys. Now I'm going to ease in on the pedal and you're going to start seeing a puddle form. Now when it's shiny, now I'm ready to actually weld. And what I like to do is you can, since this machine doesn't have a pulse, I pump the pedal down when I want to add filler rod. I'm just dipping and moving. So you don't have to pump the pedal, but it helps keep the heat under control on the panel. And as the panel heats up, you may have to reduce your pedal a little bit because you've got enough heat in the panel. Now at the end, I'm going to add one dab and you start backing off the pedal real slow. And I'm going to move away from the center of the puddle. Let it dance around and kind of solidify, and then I'm going to let off the pedal. Post flow. Now I can take my hand away. So, Joe could probably get a shot here close. I know it's a little bit of a pain for him, but we're going to kind of go back and forth here a little bit today. Um, you can see here the cleaning effect that was going on. Now in the beginning here I was dancing around just showing you guys uh, how, it, how it cleans. You know, that's excessive here. You don't really need, normally need to do that. But you can see once we were actually moving how tight the cleaning area is. Really tight on the puddle. Um, metal needs to be pretty darn clean. If there's any contaminants in it, it's going to show up. Um, it's going to get in there. And then here at the end you can see the cleaning area is larger because I was dancing around and trying to keep it from um, letting off the pedal too quickly. And I, I stopped the arc at the side there. And you can go, if you go even a little bit slower than that, uh, you, can, you can get rid of any little craters there. But that's off to the side there, so it shouldn't split down our puddle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the clearance effect here up to, let's go up to negative 2 here. So you're going to go up to negative 2 clearance effect. So what this is going to do is give us a, a wider cleaning area and also a wider puddle. As Joe's getting set up, uh, we, we can have uh, Randy check on some questions. I don't know if we have anything else that came through during that. Um, why aren't you bringing back Project Pile House? Wow. There's, oh, that's Yannick. Yannick. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he's around all the time. Yeah, he must be a big pile. Uh, Pile house. Uh, that's, that's sitting in my house, and we got two projects here going right now the Camaro and the Corvair that are just as intensive of metalwork and fab on those. So uh, that's at home, kind of just. I need to finish bodywork on that thing and get moving. That's my 2017 resolution, one of the many. So if you want to get your, your feed or your, your fix for uh, projects, uh, make sure you're following along on some of the videos we're doing with the Camaro and the uh, Corvair. 
Uh, Cody's got his hands full with the, uh, the Camaro. We've been doing some lives occasionally with that too. All right. You ready, Joe? I'm ready, Matt. All right. So we're gonna let it dance around. I'm gonna go a little quicker this time. So I'm pumping the pedal when I want to add filler rod just to keep that puddle under control so it doesn't get too hot and we're burning through. Alright, now we can dance around at the end here. Let off the amperage. I'm going to put one last little dab there, go off to the side, slowly let off the arc pedal. Now let our gas cool. Alright, now we can take our, our uh, torch away here. So you can see... The other way. Oh. Perfect. Like that? Yeah. All right. So you can see up above here, we were pretty far on the negative side. You know, again, ignore that where I was showing you in the beginning. But you see how tight it is there versus here. It's, it's a little bit larger. The cleaning area is a bit larger. That's probably a little better on this one. Uh, that's a more comfortable spot. Um, you have a little room for if there's anything in the metal, it's going to clean a little bit around it. So you can see the difference there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up again to a little more towards the positive side here. All right. So I'm going to jump up here to negative half, 0.5, and we're going to do the same thing again, and we'll show you the difference here. When we get that far. And then I'm going to do one final one after this where I'm going to show you what happens when you go too far to, to the positive side. All right. Ready again, Joe? Ready, Matt. All right. So you can already see the cleaning area is huge. It's still welding decent. Now I'm not pumping the metal pedal as much on this one because it's heating up a bigger area and I don't really have to. Alright, I'm going to dance off the side here. Slowly let off and let the gas flow. So we got a bigger cleaning area. Our puddle's getting more fat because it's heating up a bigger, a wider area. But you can see that the puddle is, is wider and also the cleaning area is much larger. So we're at negative half here again. This is, this is pretty good metal, so it's not too crazy. But what, I don't know if we can get a shot here. But what starts happening, this is what I want to show you guys. When you start, Good. when you start changing the uh, going too far positive, you're going to start seeing a ball to tip up here. Yeah, the way. That way. Yeah. You can see it's put a little ball on the tip here. So with all uh, the originally with TIG welding and transformer machines, you had to when you're welding on AC, you'd have to set a ball on the tip here and do that. Um, with the transformer machines, you don't necessarily, or I'm sorry, the inverter machines like this machine, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can weld with a uh, more sharp of a point. Uh, I'm going to go, cool. and now we're going to go out of whack here, and we're going to go to plus one. This should be fun. <laughs> and no, no, you're fine. No danger for Joe. 
just, it's going to not look great. Act all crazy. So we're going to do one more, and we'll show you guys what this does when you, st when you have your settings uh, incorrect. You have a too far positive here. Show you another one. Whenever you're ready, Joe. Ready when you See what's happening? It's actually burning the electrode away, and I can't even I can't even get a puddle to form. I'm going to give up already. So what's happening there is it's putting the heat all into your torch, into the into the tungsten, and what it did is it actually burned off part of the, the electrode of the tungsten and it started burning back and so we'll show you the, the tip of the electrode here. So this balled up, what it was doing was burning back. I actually had to pull this back out here to show you guys, but it burned back into the torch and also what happened is it actually dropped, we'll get here, it actually dropped a piece of the tungsten into the weld and immediately contaminated this weld here. So you can see all this junk here in the weld and we got that residue around and we just couldn't get it to actually start an arc. Um, that's what happens. So if you guys are fighting with welding aluminum and you're having something like that happen, make sure you check your clearance effect or your base C balance control. If you have it set kind of out of whack, it's going to start doing that. It's going to start burning away um, your tungsten and it can even drop a piece in there if it's, if it's that unstable or that hot. Drop a piece in. If you're seeing this happen, stop. Don't continue. Don't try and keep, don't try and continue to weld. It's just going to cause a mess. So this here is kind of a, a little big of a bald end on, on, the, on the tungsten. I, I don't like that. So I would probably cut that off or grind it off and, and resharpen it to a little more of a point. You can see under the hood that burning back. Burning back, back. yeah. So it's pretty crazy when you got that setting. Now, all we did was went, we were at negative half and it went to positive half. So we went just one setting up and that's the difference that it made from doing a half decent stable weld to something that's not even, you can't even work on. So uh, I see that far too often where beginners have their machine, they don't pay enough attention to the clearance effect or the ba balance control and you know, they're, they're sending us photos like that thinking there's a problem with the welder and it's, it's just a little tweak of your settings and you guys are ready to go. So uh, that's some of the, the ins and outs. Do we check one yeah. more time for any uh, questions? Yeah, before you start have... putting everything away. What's that? Um, <laughs> James Brown on... James Brown? Yeah, he must be the godfather of TIG welding. He would <laughs> like to see the difference. He would like to know, could you weld on the dirty part of the metal? Yeah. So you uh, can see what it looks like? Sure. Yeah. Compared this, to the good? Um, <clears throat> and while you're at it, sure. uh, we have a question on Facebook as well uh, from somebody who has a TIG welder and says they love it. They want to know if you're, when you stop welding, are you stopping off to the side of the puddle? And if so, why? Okay. Um, so we, yes, uh, James, we will show you. I'll do a little section here where I didn't clean it. Uh, and we'll show you that and I'll talk about that. Uh, so just hold on a, a second and I'll answer the other one first while I'm, we're getting back into position here. Um, the question was about uh, was I ending the arc to the, the puddle, uh, I was terminating off of the center of the puddle. Uh, yes, I was doing that. One of the reasons I like to do that is because uh, if you terminate in the center of that puddle there and you come off too quickly, it can leave a crater and if you go even far too quickly that can create just little tiny cracks in the weld um, that can then break right through the center of that weld. So if this, if you imagine this was a weld joint we were, we were welding on, like a butt weld, uh, if we got a crater there right on the center of that it might be prone to cracking and go right through the center of your weld. So by going off to the side it's giving a little area where we know that it's nice and solid, the weld is good in the center of the, of the area that we're welding on the joint. We just go off to the side a little bit and let it terminate the arc there and dance around and then we come off of the pedal. So yes, I was going to the side. I was dramatizing it a little bit for you guys so you could really see, but I always do try and just go just a little down or above my puddle on, at the end to let it uh, just slowly back off the amperage. So that's just trying to keep the crater control uh, so that we 
don't get those craters or cracks. So I got the, uh, we'll get one more. I'll just do real quick. We don't have to set up under the hood. Um, now the one thing I'll mention is because this is fairly, this is new metal. This isn't a dirty old piece. Um, this metal is half decent where I could probably play with the clearance. Oh, you want to do it under hood? Okay. I could probably play with the clearance effect and I could, I could uh, compensate for the not cleaning the metal on this, but I'll turn it down. Bob Green in our store is, is currently watching. Oh, cool. And he said the positive clearance effect, he's glad you're covering it, is um, one of the problems he sees when uh, people claim to have an issue with a welder. Oh, I guess good. they have the clearance effects that can correct. Yeah, so, so Bob's, oh, you know what? I got to yeah. grind this. Oh, you but know what? I'll if you're watching, Bob, oh, maybe, try to, maybe try to upsell something out. Maybe try to upsell something out there in the store, maybe. <laughs> you know? Just, you know, just, just helping. I'm glad, I'm glad you're watching, though. <laughs> so Bob, Bob works in our Pottstown store here. We have three retail stores, uh, if you guys don't know that, in Parma, Ohio. Also, Bill Illinois, and here at our headquarters in Pottstown, and uh, Bob's one of the one of the guys that works in the store there. One of our he's like a legend in Pottstown. Yeah, he's at a our legend. Pottstown store now. He is. If you come in the store, you talk to Bob. But Bob Bob does a lot of troubleshooting of our welders, so he sees what you guys are going through. Uh, you know, people can walk in the store, and you know, he'll he'll take you right back in our workshop and show you, you know, possibly what you're doing wrong or even test your welder and see if there is an issue and we can replace it right on the spot or uh, get you set up. So, all right, so I got to turn, I got the uh, clearance effect turned really far positive to kind of help with showing you what will happen when the metal's too dirty. And I'm going to work down here near the bottom. And whenever Joe's ready, we're going to get a little under hood shot here. All right. Right, so you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, but you can actually see some dirt floating in the dirt or contaminants floating right in the puddle as we're going along. Especially there in the beginning. You can also see there's a little black halo. Even with my helmet down, the hood down, I can see it. Alright, I'm going to terminate one. Well, let me show you guys the uh, crater control, you know, crater I was talking about. So I'm going to go pull my hand away. So two things can cause these craters, not backing off of the amperage real fast, uh, real slow, like I was showing you guys. And also what I did there is I pulled my hand away real quick and did not allow it to have any post flow. What happened is here, we had a really deep crater form in that panel. It's probably So there's a, there's a real deep crater there. So I did both things wrong there at the end. I pulled my foot off the pedal real fast and I pulled my hand away really quick, which I find beginners do because you're used to uh, MIG welding or stick welding or, or other types of welding where you don't need to keep your torch over it afterwards. After you stop welding, you just pull your hand away. You want to see the weld. TIG welding, you can't do that. This is what, especially on aluminum, this is what will happen. And you can see, that crater went all the way through our panel here. So on the back side of this panel, I've got a, almost a pinhole all the way through because we just shocked the, the weld from, you know, being a, from welding with gas covering it to no amperage and no gas at all. And that's what's going to happen. And if this is over a weld seam on anything that sees any kind of vibration or, or stress, that crack is going to, I can guarantee you, will start right there. And what will happen is it'll crack and it'll work its way right through your weld seam all the way through here and you'll see a crack all the way through. 
The other thing we could dive into, I'll take my helmet off here, is in the beginning of the weld here, you can see especially right in there. Now, like I said, this is fairly clean stuff. This will be a lot worse if you're welding on something that's, uh, that's an older part or something. But you can see all those little specks in there and the brown halo that's around it. That's because we didn't clean the metal, so that dirt is actually is coming off and it's getting into the weld, uh, into the actual puddle, and it's floating around in there. So when I was first welding, you could really see it in the beginning where there was black specks floating around in the, in the puddle. And that's just dirt floating and contaminant, contaminants, which is not good, obviously. Um, now again, I could, turn, I could turn the clearance effect up just a little bit, and I could probably try and counteract some of that, but it's always best to clean the part as good as you can before you actually weld it. So that, yeah, that was a great one. I'm glad I could show you guys that here at the end. Any other uh, questions we got? That's all I got for showing you guys today some aluminum. That is, that is all the questions for today. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for watching. Uh, if this is your first time or you, or you haven't watched regularly, we try and do these uh, broadcasts now. Uh, we got a schedule going. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we're doing a longer version. And then if you check it out in the mornings, uh, Randy's doing some daily deals in the morning. So you guys can grab, grab a daily deal first thing in the morning. He's doing a little live where he's announcing that. So, uh, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Make sure you catch that. And if you have any ideas for future broadcasts, drop us a line in the comments, and we'll do our best to uh, add to a future broadcast. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll catch you later.